Miranda Reef is the largest Canadian contaminated sediment site on the Great Lakes. Environment and Climate Change Canada is leading a project to clean up the site with funding support from Canada's Action Plan on Clean Water. The province of Ontario, the Hamilton Port Authority, the City of Hamilton, U.S. Steel Canada, Halton Region and the City of Burlington. The following virtual tour will provide you with an overview of how the cleanup of Randall Reef will take place over a seven-year period. Hamilton Harbour is listed under the Canada-United States Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement as an area of concern. Areas of concern are locations on the Great Lakes where water quality and ecosystem health have been severely degraded by local development use or other activities. One of the last obstacles to restoring Hamilton Harbour and removing it from the list of areas of concern is the cleanup of contaminated sediments at Randall Reef. Hamilton Harbour is located at the west end of Lake Ontario. A large commercial and residential community surrounds the harbour. The harbour is home to the largest Canadian port on the Great Lakes and one of the largest concentrations of heavy industry in Canada, including steel production. The Randall Reef site is approximately 60 hectares in area and contains 695,000 cubic meters of contaminated sediments at the bottom of the harbour, a volume that would fill a major hockey arena three times over. The site is bordered by port lands to the south, a steelmaking and processing complex to the east, and open harbour to the north and west. The sediment contamination at Randall Reef is a result of multiple sources over a period of more than 150 years. These sources have included coal gasification, petroleum refining, steel production, municipal waste, sewage effluent, and overland drainage. Randall Reef is contaminated with polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, commonly known as PAHs, and heavy metals. The PAHs are present in very high concentrations and are of greatest concern because they are known to be persistent, toxic, and carcinogenic. PAHs contribute to restrictions on fish and wildlife consumption, fish and wildlife deformities, and reproductive problems in Hamilton Harbor. The Randall Reef Contaminated Sediment Remediation Project involves the construction of an engineered containment facility, or ECF, situated on top of the most severely contaminated sediment at the site. By constructing the ECF in this manner, the majority of the most contaminated sediments will not be disturbed, thereby reducing the risk of spread of contaminants. The bulk of the remaining contaminated sediment will be dredged from the surrounding area and placed within the ECF. As the ECF reaches its storage capacity, Areas of lesser contaminated sediment will be managed by the application of a thin layer of sand to provide a new and cleaner substrate. Once completed, the ECF will have a surface area of approximately 6.2 hectares, roughly equivalent to seven football fields, and will be available for development for port usage by the Hamilton Port Authority. The decision to build an ECF was the result of a lengthy review of alternatives conducted by a project advisory group consisting of 17 stakeholder organizations. The group reviewed sediment management options over an 18-month period, resulting in the current option being chosen. The following steps show how the facility will be built. Two parallel steel sheet pile walls will be used to form the containment facility. The outer sheet pile wall is primarily a structural wall, driven deep to provide strength to the facility, and the inner wall will serve as an impermeable, sealed environmental wall containing the sediments from the harbor. The connections between sheets on this wall will be sealed. This wall will also extend deep into the clay present in the harbor bottom, sealing the facility at its base. These two aspects form the complete containment and isolation of the contaminated sediments. Once the walls have been constructed, the contaminated sediments will be removed from between the walls and placed inside the facility by a mechanical dredge and or high solids pump. Rock fill will then be placed between the inner sealed environmental wall and the outer structural wall to provide additional structural stability. As you can see, the ECF is situated over top of a large portion of the most contaminated sediments, shown in red. 
The remaining red and orange areas will be dredged and placed within the facility. A portion of the lesser contaminated sediment will also be placed in the ECF. The dredging will be conducted using a hydraulic dredge. This dredge uses a cutter head to loosen contaminated sediments and create sediment water slurry, which is then pumped through a large pipeline into the ECF. Monitoring of air, water, and sediment quality will be undertaken throughout dredging to ensure that no adverse impacts on the environment occur during the implementation of the project. To reduce air emissions, the slurry will flow through a pipeline and discharge underwater directly into the ECF. Air quality will be continuously monitored in accordance with the air quality monitoring plan established for the project. As the ECF is filled, a polymer may be added to the water sediment slurry to enhance the sediment particles settling to the bottom of the ECF. The water in the ECF will be collected and pumped to a temporary water treatment plant, which will be constructed on the adjacent pier. The water treatment plant will remove any remaining sediment or dissolved contaminants in the water prior to discharging it to Hamilton Harbor. Upon completion of the dredging, Sampling of the remaining harbor bottom sediment will be conducted to confirm that cleanup targets have been met. A sediment management technique called thin layer capping will be used to manage any residual contamination. This thin layer cap will provide a clean substrate that sediment dwelling organisms can colonize. Once the dredging and placement of contaminated sediment within the ECF is complete and the water has been removed, the ECF cap will be constructed on top of the contaminated sediment. The ECF cap will be constructed through the following five steps. First, a foundation layer made of synthetic material will be placed on top of the dredged sediment to provide a stable surface to build upon. Then a drainage layer will be added to enable any residual water from within the sediments to be collected and removed. Next, a synthetic impermeable barrier will be put in place. This barrier layer will ensure that no water from sediments can migrate to the surface and that no surface water can migrate to the sediments. Following this step, another drainage layer will be added along with a stormwater collection system. When these four layers have been installed, the cap and dredged sediments below are ready to be consolidated. Consolidation is needed in order to provide the soil strength required for the future use of the facility. To consolidate the cap and sediments, preload is added. Preload is a temporary pile of heavy materials such as crushed rock or gravel. The weight of the preload will compress the dredged sediments and squeeze out any remaining water through wick drains. This water will be collected and pumped to the water treatment plant for treatment. The preload will be in place for approximately one year and then removed. Once consolidation is complete, the preload can be removed and the surface can be paved for use by the Hamilton Port Authority. The project will take seven years to complete, two years for the construction of the ECF structure, two years for hydraulic dredging of the contaminated sediment located outside of the facility, and three years for the consolidation and capping of the contaminated sediments in the facility. A 15-year post-construction monitoring plan is in place to demonstrate the effectiveness of the project. The plan includes biological, chemical, and physical monitoring of the facility and the surrounding harbour area. Completion of the Randall Reef project will eliminate a significant source of contamination to the Great Lakes, it will enable the many partners who have contributed towards the restoration of the water quality and environmental health of Hamilton Harbour to declare success. And it will help set the stage for the Government of Canada to remove Hamilton Harbour from its list of Great Lakes areas of concern.